Hello, welcome again to the lecture series on control systems engineering. So let me continue with the introduction to control systems. In this session, we'll be discussing about classification of control system based on underlying principles and uh, also based on mathematical relationships. We'll compare and contrast control systems and state basic requirements of a control system. First, control systems can be classified as open loop control system and closed loop control systems. Linear control system and non-linear control systems. Type invariant control systems and time variant control systems, analog control systems and digital control systems. We can have a control system which can be closed loop, linear, time invariant and analog type. Okay, so we can have many possibilities depending on the type of problem you have to solve. Now let us understand what we mean by these. So here let me talk about an open loop control system. As I mentioned in the previous session, in this control system, you have a controller, also you have a plant and a system. And here you have the input that is set value or the desired value. And at the output point, we have controlled variable. Whatever illustrations I gave in the previous session, I used to show this loop to this path to. So in an open loop control system, this will not be there. The function of this path is to measure the value, the output value, and feed it back to the input point. This we call it as feedback path. So an open loop control system is one without a feedback. Okay, so we can say the output in an open loop control system the output will be completely independent of input. So here no output is not measured, it is not compared with the input, error is not generated and error is not corrected. So it may be possible to get what we want, may not be possible to get what we want. Correct. If your controller, the plant, all these things, they work in the desired fashion, then it is possible to get what we want. If there are any variation, any disturbances are there, then it may not be possible to get what we want. So that way it is completely independent. Look at this example. Here I have shown an open loop CNC machine. Basically, I want to control, say, the table displacement, also the tool position, say, tool traverse in the z direction, and displacement of the table in the x direction as well as in the y direction. Correct? I must be keeping a part over here. I want to machine that part. Okay, for that I'll just control X and Y displacement. Imagine I want to maybe, I want to make a hole over here, another hole over here, another hole over here, another hole over here. I would have written a program and I sent the program. Okay, to the actuators, in this case, motor. So this is the controller you have. 
okay here you can think of having actuators they are nothing but the motors and the plant is nothing but this same table so you would give x y displacement as also the z displacement you may get this controller will send a signal to this actuators the actuators may move the table exactly to the required x and y positions also the z value the depth value it may maintain it may not maintain also of course whatever you know disturbance might happen i would have taken care of all those things in my program and done it yes it's possible to get what we want otherwise it may not be possible at all okay the question here is there are no devices which are measuring the x displacement okay there is no device here or a sensor here which is measuring the x direction displacement and there is no sensor here which is measuring the y direction there is no sensor here which measures the z direction of this two movement and accordingly send back and correct it that is that facility is missing the feedback is not there such a system is called open loop control system it is very easy to build that is the reason why we prefer this just read the program and all that i do not have to spend my invest money or system design complexities all these things we can avoid <coughs> if accuracy is not the main criteria probably this is a very good system so the same thing i have shown here desired tool path or you can say desired tool position so actual tool position a path so here you have the cnc controller then the servo motors will act as actuators and the table will act as a plant only thing is there are no devices which are measuring the x y z displacements and feeding them back to controller to make any corrections okay such a system is open loop control system that's why we say the output is completely independent of input you see here another good example of open loop control system is your bread toaster what is that you are going to do here you set the toast timing and insert the toast okay you switch on then once the time gets over automatically it gets released it comes out it's not going to check the quality of the toast it may be under roasted or it may be over roasted but if at all you have some device which can measure the color of this accordingly increase or decrease the time of roasting then probably you will get the required so only thing is again measuring such a developing such a sensors designing such sensors inserting such sensor that might increase the cost of the system and it may not many of the times may not serve the purpose also okay this is the best example of open loop control systems so many of the traffic flow you have seen there is a fixed flow timing for green lamp yellow lamp and red lamp is not going to bother about what is the volume of traffic based on the volume of traffic it is not going to either increase or decrease the glow timing of the lamps so it is another example for open loop control system right yes but in engineering practice it is always desirable to get what we want that's why we go for closed loop control system so as i explained in the previous session also you have a controller you have an actuator you have system or plant the output that is controlled variable is measured using a measuring device or a sensor and it is fed back and this feedback value is compared with a reference value you can call it as a comparator a part of the controller itself and generate the error signal and the controller will initiate appropriate action to reduce this error to zero or eliminate this reduce the error to zero or to some required or tolerable value that's what exactly it happens so here output is not completely dependent on input so such a system we call it as a closed loop control system 
as you have said, explained earlier. Let us see. <coughs> that is machine control unit. That is your controller. Where you can feed the program, right? And here, so you can describe in your program what is the desired tool, tool path or tool position, whatever you are looking at. And here, actual tool path you can measure using sensor. Maybe you can use rotary encoders like this. Suppose you are looking at the speed of the motor. Yes, you can do that. So these encoders, right, feed the value. Look here. Actual speed. Here you are given desired tool speed. Maybe the input tool path. Instead of that, you can say desired tool speed or desired machine tool speed. Actual tool speed. Actual speed is measured using this rotary encoder RPM again and it converts that RPM into electrical signal. Digital signal again, digital to analog signal and okay, or analog signal is there analog to digital signal and here you are feeding the program, the control unit will find the error. And to reduce the error, what needs to be done? Whether motor, servo motor has to rotate faster, slower, Whatever it is, it will decide based on, it will control the servo motor. Servo motor in turn, control the, this, this, this board it will come, it's servo motor. Servo motor in turn, control the machine to speed. So here, this is what we have. This is a feedback device. So such a control system, you can call it a, a closed loop control system. So here, you will achieve what you want. Okay, most of the machines which I explained, the CNC machine, which we use for the manufacturing machining purpose, or the robot system, what we are talking about, or you can think of even a closed loop traffic flow control and the flight control. These are all the best examples for closed loop control systems. So, from this explanation, now we can just differentiate in an open loop control system there will not be feedback. So it will perform accurately if all the calibrations is, is correct. If there are any disturbances, it will not take care of those disturbances, main thing. So since there is no feedback, definitely very easy to design as well as building the system is easy. Since there is no feedback, there is no error correction, definitely it will be more stable. I will explain what we mean by non-linearities and a non-linearity system operation degenerates. I will explain in the next slide. But closed loop control system, you can get what you want that because of the feedback. It performs accurately because it goes on working till the desired output. Output is equal to the input. It's difficult because you are introducing the feedback of course, the design complexity will increase and again it has to correct the error. There will be oscillations, the stability and all those kind of things. We will explain all these things mathematically later. Okay. You can say for the time being less stable, more stable means system will have oscillatory behavior. Here system may not have any oscillatory behavior. Correct. And even if there are non-linearities, which I said explain in the next slide. Under the presence of non-linear system operates better than open. Okay, now you can just play these videos from YouTube and you can understand the difference between open loop and closed loop control systems. So here the question is now, if you go back, go back, here I have seen plus here I have shown minus. If there is minus, it is negative feedback. That means this feedback signal is subtracted from the reference signal, error is generated. Correct? Error goes on decreasing in this case. 
if there is plus here this is added with this error goes on building that is then it is called positive feedback control system so positive feedback occurs to increase the change or output the result of a reaction reaction is amplified to make it occur more quickly negative feedback occurs to reduce the change or output the result of a reaction is reduced to bring the system back to a stable state what i'm trying to say is error builds up the system output also keeps on building up building up building up building up but it is the what bounded value in a negative feedback system it's not like that it will go there then it gets saturated and reaches to the desired value it will not go on building up like this so positive feedback system is also called it as called as regenerative feedback system okay right then sometimes you use the word servo mechanism servo mechanism is basically a negative feedback system where the output is either a displacement velocity or acceleration a servo motor motor output is what either it is displacement or its angular velocity or angular acceleration that if i connect it to probably a xy table so displacement of xy table or velocity of that table or acceleration of that table we are talking about dynamic systems okay we are talking about dynamic systems we can explain the behavior of dynamic systems by means of differential equations right differential equations you know if y is the displacement then in a dynamic system dy by dt will become velocity and d square y by dt square will become acceleration and acceleration multiplied by mass that will become a force right similarly force to velocity may will become power is like that so dynamic systems are characterized by differential based on the type of differential equation a control system can be a linear control system or it can be a non linear control system how do we define a linear control system it is characterized by a linear differential equation what do you mean by linear characterized by linear differential equation if i plot y versus like output versus input then it will have a linear character if a plot y was like output versus input if it is giving a non linear characteristic then it is a non linear differential equation suppose i have a differential equation like this d square y by dt square plus 3 dy by dt plus 2y is equal to say f of t a force y is displacement let us say so i plot y versus f of t y is the output so it can be proportional y can be proportional to f of t it's linear differential equation okay you can see here the degree of the differential equation is 1 order of the differential equation is 2 and these differential coefficients are constants okay so these are all characterized by this kind of first degree equations so when output versus input characteristic is linear we can always write y is directly proportional to f of t or y is equal to some constant with the f of t so constant is what i call it as proportionality constant that means the slope is constant so dy by df is constant this is what you call it as a proportionality constant so this we call it as <coughs> like you know we 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 say that a linear control system 
satisfy the principle of superposition and principle of homogeneity. What is that? Suppose I have an electrical circuit. I'll give certain voltage, let us say V1, and it will the circuit output may be a, some current, say I1. I know I1, I know V1, so I'll mark the point. Next time I'll give a voltage, let us say V2, then it will show a current, say I2. Again, this two are sorry. Again, there's a point here. If I give a voltage which is equal to V1 plus V2, then it should show a current I1 plus I2. Then all these points will be on a single line. Linear superposition. Okay. Principle of superposition. See, I1 is directly proportional to V1. So you will get a constant of proportionality K1. Similarly, I2 is directly from V2, constant of K, K2. So it is same. A linear control system should have principle of homogeneity as well as principle of superposition. You see here, I1 can be one here, I2 can be another thing. It can be proportional, but its proportionality constant is different from this proportionality constant. So when I join all these things together, it will not satisfy the principle of superposition. Okay. So this is what I have shown, linear differential equation, what it means and all that. So linear control system will be characterized by such differential equations. Other way, a non-linear control system will be characterized by a non-linear differential equation. You can see here. Here the degree is not, order is not, uh, sorry, degree is not 1. It is 1 degree here, 1 degree, second degree. So output by input, if I plot, definitely you will not get a linear. It's a parabola. So a non-linear control system is one which is characterized by non-linear differential. So since it is characterized by non-linear differential, neither it satisfies the principle of superposition nor the principle of homogeneity. So your closed loop system will have feedback and a linear system Yes, it will be characterized by linear differential equation. That means when I write the system differential equation, correct, and the system differential equation is a linear one, then that control system is a linear control system. Okay, right. So there is again time variant and time invariant system. When the characteristics of the system do not depend upon time itself, then the system is said to be time invariant. Suppose I have a XY table. Okay. It has a certain mass, certain damping, certain stiffness, all these, these mechanical properties. The system, these properties, when I write the differential equation, let us say m d square y by dt square, later how it comes, I'll tell you, dt square plus c dy by dt plus ky, you see here, this is not changing. This is not function of time. This is not function of time. This is not function of time. Correct? So, the characters of the system do not depend upon time itself. Okay, you see here. It is constant. It is time. There is no time. Here, in this case, you see this input. Anyway, this is time dependent. So time varying control system is, is one more parameters vary with the time. For example, it is a racket or something like that. Yes, its mass changes, its damping changes, all these things. So with respect to time changes, so that is time in variant system. So if the characteristic of the system do not depend upon time itself, then it is time invariant system. So we will study feedback systems 
that is closed loop systems, mostly negative feedback. Next, linear system characterized by linear differential equation, also time invariant systems. So, we will study LTI systems, linear time invariant systems. So, the signals that we use, they can be analog signals, it can be digital signals. Okay, here you have here set value, controlled variable. Here you may get an analog signal. Again, the analog signal is measured compared with the set value. Error signal is also analog. Controller output is also analog. Then displacement is also analog and now you are now you are using an electronic controller of course the error signal is digital signal controller output signal is also digital again right up till some point to the plant probably you require an analog signal you have to convert digital signal into analog signal and feed it so it's mixed, mixed. Both you have analog as well as digital. If purely all are digital signals, then you can call it as digital control system. Otherwise, here you have mixture of digital analog. Of course, you need the electronic circuitry to convert analog signal to digital and digital to analog. That's where analog to digital converter ADC and DAC, the DAC will be there. So you are interested in building a present day control system. You want to con a simple speed control system for a motor you want to build like this. So you must have complete understanding of your electronics. Microcontroller understanding you should have, amplifiers, DAC, ADC, motor knowledge, all these are necessary if you want to build a control system. Thus it becomes a more of a multidisciplinary course rather than pure a mechanical or aeronautical or anything like that. So it is necessary to build all those knowledge in addition to getting the mathematical understanding of the system. Okay. So whatever control system you design, basically a control system, whatever you design must be stable. One. What do you mean by stable? Suppose to a control system, I give some kind of an input like this. Let us study all this. I call it as a bounded input, a finite input I will give. Correct? What I mean by that is, you see here, in this system, I want this to rotate at 10 RPM. Okay? Bounded. So finally, the system output, like in a motor, the output should be like this, okay? Here you are given a value of 10. Then the motor will oscillate around this and finally achieve the 10 RPM. So bounded input, bounded output. It may oscillate and do, some system may not oscillate at all. So, you are given certain finite input, output also should become finite. It may oscillate, may not oscillate. We call that such a system a stable system. You got it? Right. Now, another thing is relative stability. What do you mean by relative stability? Suppose I have given an input, I have given a voltage signal correct to achieve that input then the motor has to start and achieve that speed so it will oscillate and do that how much time it will take to reach that desired value you must have seen the video electronic stability program or even anti-lock brake systems and other things you apply the brake in what time the vehicle will stop. 
correct? Because again, if the vehicle is not going to stop in the required time, probably it will cover more distance, might lead to accident. How fast, when I give an input, how fast it can respond. If I open the throttle valve of a motorbike, how fast it can achieve a speed of 0 to 100 kilometers per hour. That is what I am talking about, relative stability or speed of response. How fast it can do. Okay, next thing is accuracy. What do you mean by accuracy? Like, you know, you have got the input, you have got the output. What is the final once it is settled up, what is the difference between the input and output? The difference whether the error is zero or within the defined value. That's what it is. So suppose in an unstable system, so here continuously it is oscillating. It is continuously building up. Yes, there will not be accuracy. It's an unstable system. Okay. So here I have just explain meaning of equilibrium, unstable equilibrium, stable equilibrium, like this kind of a thing. Suppose, if I disturb this, it was here initially, I take it back and leave it. It may oscillate like this, go back, go back, like this, right, go up. And finally, it will settle down. That is what we call it a stable. And it will come to equilibrium position. Here, it is not like that. Once I leave it, it will go down. Only. It will not come back to equilibrium position at all. Unstable equilibrium. This is stable equilibrium. I am not talking about equilibrium. I am talking about more of stability. Okay. Suppose if I give an input, whether the output achieves that input within the desired time. That is what is important. So we must design the control system to do this. So what we do is we convert that physical system, any physical system for that matter. Okay. Let us say. Any, any of these things you take. You express this machine control unit. Yes. You have this. Develop its mathematical model. Develop its mathematical model. Develop the table mathematical model. Write the table mathematical equation or output input relationship for rotary encoders. So when you are written all the mathematics, we play with the mathematics and also we represent the input in term of a mathematical sigma. And output also we will get in a mathematical signal and see that what parameters we have to cue and play with so that we can get the desired configurations. Means we define the stability, relative stability and accuracy, whether the system <coughs> can achieve the required stability, whether it can respond within the required time, whether it will achieve the required accuracy. This is what exactly we should be doing by converting the physical system into mathematical equations. So, in subsequent topics, I think we'll introduce the mathematical fundamentals, also how to mathematically model them and carry out the analysis and finally how to design controllers for achieving the required specification, design specification. That is stability specifications, relative stability specification and accuracy related specifications okay thus now we have understood what a control system is what we mean by feedback control system you have understood and what kind of differential equations they will be characterized with so once you have understood all these things let us start on a serious note about how to build control system, how to first build mathematical models for further analysis of control system we'll study in the subsequent sessions now thank you very much <laughs>